In this video, I'm going to explain when to build automations using Pipedrive's native automation features and when you might need to use a third-party automation tool like Zapier. Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome back to another one of our Pipedrive training videos. Now, if you are a Pipedrive user, you may already be using the native automation features within Pipedrive to automate steps within your sales process. This is great for things like when you move a deal to a certain stage in your pipeline, you could send an email or you could automate creating an activity, things like that. But sometimes we hit limitations with the native automation feature and we need to use a third party service like Zapier. So that's what I'm going to be discussing in this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment down below. And if you'd like help with setting up or optimizing and automating more of your sales process using Pipedrive, then click the link in the description below to learn more about our support and consulting options. Now let's start by having a look at the native Pipedrive automation features. And we're gonna link up here our getting started with Pipedrive automation video. So if you have never used Pipedrive's automation features before, definitely go and check out that video first. We're also gonna link another video that we made where I show some of the automations that I've built in our actual Pipedrive account. If you want some ideas for the kinds of things that you can automate in Pipedrive, check out that video as well. Now, I wanna start by saying that even though I'm a heavy user of Zapier, and I love Zapier for connecting Pipedrive with other tools and things that we use in our business, I still use Pipedrive automation a lot. And the main reason for that is that I find creating automations natively in Pipedrive actually often a bit quicker and easier than setting up a Zap. Often, if I'm creating an automation and I'm just doing something completely within Pipedrive, I'm not integrating any other third-party tools, you know, I'm not linking Calendly or Xero or QuickBooks, I'm not integrating my email marketing software like MailChimp or ActiveCampaign. If I'm just doing automation strictly within Pipedrive, that's usually why I would use the Pipedrive automation features. As you can see, I have a lot of automations set up that run natively in Pipedrive um, that we've built over the years. Um, just to give you some examples of the types of things we do, here's one where when we update a deal and the status of the deal has changed to one, and as long as that deal is on our Asana subscriptions pipeline, we do a couple of things. We create an activity here. This goes to Charmaine on my team. Actually, we create a couple of activities and if the subscription type, which is one of our custom fields, is update, there's an additional activity here. So this is a great example of a simple automation. I'm just automating steps within Pipedrive. I'm not linking any third-party software, and I just want to do something simple like when I update or win a deal, create some activities. Here's another one where, again, if we update a deal and the label on the deal has changed and the labels now contain, uh, if, if we add the bundle label, if the title contains the word Asana and it didn't contain the bundle label before, so there's a few conditions there, we actually create a new deal. So this is something we do if somebody has approached us to ask about Asana Consulting and now we want to also create a deal because maybe they want to buy a subscription from us, we just use that bundle label to trigger an automation to create this new deal and then it creates an activity. So that's nice because we don't have to manually create that deal, we just add the label and Pipedrive's automation takes care of the rest for us. And here's another one where if we update a deal and we change the status of the deal to lost and if the lost reason is no show, which means somebody didn't show up for their introductory call with us. And as long as we do not have the do not contact label, we automate sending an email, which is our no-show email. This is actually a, a template that we've created. And this particular automation is set up to run for um, the different users or salespeople in our account. So that's a nice example of automating an email, again, all built natively inside Pipedrive. So Pipedrive automation is great for these kinds of scenarios where we just want to automate fairly simple tasks, activities, emails, updates natively in Pipedrive. Now, the main limitation of Pipedrive's automation tool, as you can see here, is that they're very linear. You can, you can use conditions to stop an automation if certain conditions aren't met, but there's no support at the moment, although I think Pipedrive may update this in the future, it certainly makes sense to, 
There's no support yet for conditional logic or paths. So I can't have a logic where I say, okay, if we update the deal and move it to this stage, if the deal has this label, do this. If it has this other label, do that. We can't do that in Pipedrive. We can really only use conditions to stop the automation from continuing any further. We can't split into paths. The other main limitation around Pipedrive automation is around the number of actions and delays that you can add to an automation sequence. And this is gonna depend a little bit on the plan that you're on. So starting on the advanced plan, you need to be on advanced to have automation to begin with. You can have 30 active automations per user, but you can only have 10 actions per automation. So an action would be creating an activity, sending an email, updating a deal, things like that. And then you can only have three delays per automation with a maximum delay time limit of 90 days. If you go to professional, you can have more automations, but you're still limited to 10 actions and you can have 10 delays. Uh, and then it's basically the same for power, uh, 90, 10, 10. Enterprise, you can have 100 automations, but again, you're still limited to just 10 actions and 10 delay steps per automation. So that would be a big factor to consider. If you are creating an automation with lots of steps or you have lots of delays happening, you may find you hit a limit with Pipedrive automation and that would be a scenario where something like Zapier would become more useful. Now, I mentioned at the start that Pipedrive automation doesn't work well with third-party integrations and that would be a reason to use Zapier. I just wanna cover my bases here and point out that yes, if you add an action step to an automation, if I come to my actions, you can integrate some third-party tools like Microsoft Teams, um, what have we got here, Slack, Trello, Asana. Um, so you can still, for example, when you win a deal, maybe we wanna create a board or a card in Trello, or we might want to post an update to Slack. Yes, we can do some integration with third-party tools. However, the actions that you can perform, I find are more limited than what you can do in Zapier. And just the number of apps that you can integrate with is a lot more extensive with Zapier than what is available here in Pipedrive. So yeah, there are some things you can do, but if you're integrating lots of tools, um, other, other apps that you use in your tech stack that don't integrate natively, again, that would be a situation where you would need to look at using something like Zapier. So here's how I would summarize using Pipedrive automation. Number one, as I said, it's simple and easy to use. I actually think it's quicker building automations natively in Pipedrive compared to building a Zap in Zapier. It's great for simple automations like creating activities, sending emails, and if you're not gonna be constrained by some of those limits, like the number of actions you can have or the amount of delays you can have, great, go for it, use Pipedrive. And probably the third and one of the biggest reasons to use Pipedrive is compared to Zapier, where in Zapier, your subscription and what you pay for your Zapier account is dependent on the number of tasks that Zapier performs for you. So to lower your cost of using Zapier, if you can build an automation in Pipedrive, you should, because you may as well, if you're not constrained by those limits, it's gonna lower your Zapier usage and bring down your overall cost. So now turning our attention to Zapier, the main advantages or reasons why you would need to use Zapier, firstly, are if you are creating an automation where the trigger event or the thing that you're waiting to have happen is something that happens outside of Pipedrive. You know, all the Pipedrive automations that I just showed you there rely on an event or a trigger happening inside Pipedrive. So creating a deal, updating a deal, creating a new person, things like that. But sometimes we wanna create automations when something happens in some other tool. For example, one that I've talked about many times is when we get a Calendly booking, so somebody books an introductory call with us, we want to update our email marketing software, and then we want to update Pipedrive. So that trigger, that event is happening in some other tool. That's the first reason why we basically have to use Zapier. There's no option to use Pipedrive automation for this type of thing. Zapier is also a really good option if sometimes there is a native integration with Pipedrive. Again, Calendly actually, you can add a Calendly app from the Pipedrive marketplace to your Pipedrive account, 
but I've tested it and I find that native integration quite basic. Whereas with Zapier, it's a lot more powerful. We can put in formatter steps, we can put in custom code steps. You can basically build and code your completely own customized integration. So just, it's a lot more powerful. There's a lot more options available. So here's an example of uh, why we need to use Zapier. So my trigger is an invitee being created or a booking happening in Calendly. We do a bunch of formatting here. We update Kit, which is our email marketing software. And then in these later stages, we um, find and update the organization, the person and the deal in Pipedrive. Um, and so there's, there's a bit going on here. We create some activities as well. Um, as you can see, there's more than 10 action steps. So again, another reason to use Zapier. We're integrating multiple third-party tools, Kit, Pipedrive, Calendly. So this is just something that wouldn't even be possible in Pipedrive automation, which is why we're using Zapier. Another big advantage that Zapier has over Pipedrive is that you can create a lot more dynamic workflows. What I mean by that is you can use formatter steps and code steps to have the output that Zapier is performing um, change based on the different inputs. So kind of like using conditional paths and conditional logic, we can say, you know, look up the, based on this custom field, look up and find the correct variable or the correct product that we want to use later on. Again, this is just something that's not even possible in Pipedrive, or if you were gonna try to attempt doing this in Pipedrive, you'd have to create lots of duplicate automations where you tweak these little bits each and every time. You may end up with five automations that do basically the same thing, but you've just tweaked little, you know, the output like the label and things that get used that's gonna create a whole host of challenges when it comes to updating your automations. And if you just had one workflow in Zapier instead, it's just gonna make maintaining these automations a lot easier. So here's an example of an automation where when we win a deal in Pipedrive, first thing we do actually is we get the customer and subscription details from Stripe, which is our payment processor, because we want to use that in those inputs, that information later on in our Zap. We then do some things down here where we um, look up the revenue po probability that we want to use. We look up a specific revenue model. And again, that's all based on the inputs that we receive later. And then, we ch and then when we create our renewal deal down here and we add products, it's all very dynamic. So the products that get added um, are dependent on the data we received earlier on in the automation. If you're hearing that and you're wondering, what is he saying? I don't even get it. Basically what I'm saying is Zapier allows you to create more powerful automations. And some of the things you may be trying to do in Pipedrive automation just aren't possible, and that's why you need Zapier. And the final big reason why you often need something like Zapier is that firstly, you can create big zaps that integrate lots of tools and you can have conditional paths. I mean, look at this, you've got one trigger, we come down here, we split into four paths, and then these paths split into more paths and paths within paths. There is a lot going on here. There's lots of action steps. Uh, that's the other thing as well, actually. You can have up to 100 action steps per automation in Zapier. Although, interestingly, the delays can only be up to 30 days. Um, where Pipedrive, you can delay up to 90 days. So that is one advantage that Pipedrive has over Zapier. But uh, yeah, again, a lot more powerful um, functionality and options available here in Zapier. So that was a bit of a look at a comparison between Pipedrive automation and Zapier. Now the key takeaway here is it's not one or the other. I'm not advocating Zapier over Pipedrive. It's actually both. There are times when Pipedrive automation is better because it's simpler, it's quicker and easier to use. And for simple automations, I prefer it. Whereas often we do need to look at something like Zapier if we are using external triggers, we're integrating lots of other services, uh, there's lots of conditional path and steps and logic going on, and we need Zapier for those more powerful, complex situations. If you're stuck and don't have time to figure out automation on your own, click the link in the description below, book an introductory call with us, and we can help you figure out what's possible using Pipedrive automation, do we need Zapier, and ultimately we can help you to streamline your sales process. This is something I've been working on for the last few years, and putting automated systems in place not only saves us time, it actually makes us better at our job, means we can follow up more effectively, and we close more deals. If you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.